Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, where today, um, guys, guys, well, <clears throat> um, these things do happen. That's how the, that's how the onion do. The scientific name of this plant is Allium shonoprasm, or chives. Your plain old, you can buy at the store chives. I'm not bashing them. They're delicious. Mm. I put these things in soup and they're amazing. But anyway, they're in the Amaryllidaceae family, just like their cousin garlic chives, which means they're in Amaryllis, as are all true onions, essentially. They just happen to be the edible wing of the family. Um, don't eat your Amaryllis bulbs. Don't even think about it, y'all. Just saying. Putting it out there. Anyway, the word shonoprasm comes from the word shoini, shoinos. Whew, I almost turned that into Japanese, which means rush as in the type of grass. And prasum means leek. And these are translated from the original Latin slash Greek, mind you. So, rush leek is what that combines. And when you, when they're um, not frosted, this plant is actually alive and fine. It just doesn't look too good. They, chives never look that great in the winter, or near in December anyway. Um, they're, they look sort of like a rush, which has rounded stems, pointed tips, you know, until they bloom, you might not know the difference, or until you crush the foliage and smell that intense chive onion scent that cannot be replicated in any of the other members of the onion family. This plant is actually native to the old and the new world, which is unusual. It's kind of amazing. There is no specific point of origin. It's so widely distributed, and it was widely distributed probably before mankind started really, really categorizing things, that it's everywhere, which is cool. So, it's hardy in USDA zones 3 through 9. It is a perennial. It may die back to the ground in winter in some places, not so much here in 8A probably. Its soil pH preference is 6 through 7, which ain't bad. Its exposure is full sun or a light shade. It does not tolerate full-on partial shade, though. It'll get root... well, its roots will get all mushy, and it'll slowly decline and fall apart. Its height... the foliage height can be up to a foot, but it can be up to two feet with its flowers, just like you saw in the garlic chive video, where the flower stalks were way bigger than the foliage. Its width, individually speaking, individual plants can be up to a foot, but no one plants individual plants. These are actually clusters of bulbs. Yes, them and garlic chives are in fact bulb forming. I mean, they're not like, you know, the yellow onions you buy at the store, but you get the idea. Now, let's go into some facts. There are no other names for chives. We all know them as chives. That's it. And chive is actually a borrow word from the French, but that's a totally different video, I think, involving the intricacies of Latin. So, as I said, it's the only species of allium native to the new and the old, old world. How that came to be is unknown. Did people carry it? Did animals carry it? We don't know. But what we do know is that it's native, and there's actually supposedly a divergent species that can be found here in North America called, I believe it's Allium shonoprasm sibericum, that is theoretically different and has gray flowers and, you know. Now, I should mention something here. This is a clap back to the, the call back to that, the garlic chive video. The flowers on this one, the flowers on this one are lavender ish color, sort of lavender lilac-y colored. The flowers on garlic chives are white. There is a big difference between the two. They emerge similarly, but additionally I should point out, the stems on chives are tubular and hollow, whereas on garlic chives they're flat. So that's one identification key to tell the two apart. Now, um, the one thing that's great about chives is that they provide a metric load of nectar for pollinators. Them and ch garlic chives are really good at bringing in the pollinators. And with them, the things that predate, so you'll have spiders hanging out underneath the flowers to snatch a bee or whatever, it's really cool to watch. In fact, in the summer, on the garlic chive plant, I actually saw the first praying mantis in my yard, in this, uh, this garden, in years. Which tells me I'm doing something right. So, and it was ironically eating a hover bee, which, like, eh, whatever, you know. So, 
much like garlic chives, the sulfur compounds in its sap are insect repellent. Now, I wouldn't advise rolling around in it because you're going to smell like an onion, and I don't think that's good for church. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Not good for church. But it means they don't really get pests, which is great. You guys one less thing to worry about. Am I right? Now, uh, chives were first described by Linnaeus in 1753 in the species Planetarum. So that's when they really got their traction in Europe. In the Middle Ages, though, it was called flat-out rush leak. You see how that went full circle? Now, as for chives, here's some growing tips. Good soil. A potting soil will be fine, but a loose, airy soil that isn't known for compaction or, uh, you know, retaining too much water being swampy. Um, a basic potting soil will be fine. You really don't need to divide chives. You can if you want to, but it's not necessary. In this case, these are small, these started as small cell pack groups, and you can see how they've divided nicely down there. You know, they're not looking great now, but they'll take care of themselves. Now, what they really require, much like the garlic chives, is regular watering, when dry, especially when dry in the high heats, and regular fertilizer to get the best bang for your buck. They're super easy. They're one of those great garden herbs that is also technically a vegetable and serves multiple purposes that you can also teach kids with so there's that so if you want to get your kids involved in the garden go for the garlic chives go for the chives they're an easy win you turn around and suddenly they're bigger everybody wins that way so with that said if you have any thoughts on growing chives or recipes that you've thought of again mashed potatoes for the win put them in soup anything works especially in an omelet put them down there. I'd love to hear from you. Free exchange of ideas. Um, if you like this video, please hit subscribe. Please hit the like button. And uh, in the description, there will be a link to the Forge blog covering forage plants that you can find and eat in the wilderness. Um, and of course, with that said, thank you for watching. And as always, folks, keep them growing.